Russia's widespread missile attacks on Ukrainian infrastructure knocked out power across the country. Their national power supplier says it's now meeting about 75 percent of electricity demand. Residents still without power can visit any of Ukraine's new invincibility points. These are pop-up stations offering shelter, power charging, hot water, and internet connection. Ukraine's President Zelensky, however, isn't entirely happy with the rollout of this program, criticizing how many stations aren't working properly in Kyiv. And joining us now is CNN military analyst, retired Air Force Colonel Cedric Layton. All right, Colonel, Russia has shifted its strategy from holding territory on the ground instead to attacking infrastructure. What do you make of this? So this is a really big deal, Paula, and uh, one way to illustrate this is through this satellite image. Uh, this was taken back in January, so before the war started. This was taken this week in November, so you see how few lights are actually visible right here. And it's really kind of analogous to the pictures that you see of North Korea at night. Uh, this is kind of what Russia is trying to do to Ukraine. North Koreans did it to themselves. The Russians did this to Ukraine. And you can see, you know, this would be Kyiv right in this area. Uh, but everything else is basically blank. Over here, there were so many villages that had light. Here, nothing. That's really amazing. I mean, how have you seen this situation evolve based on where we were in the spring to now? So what you see here, this uh, is a very quick look at how quickly uh, things have changed uh, over the course of these last few, uh, few months, the last nine months. Uh, but as you go through this, one of the key things to think about is how much work really went into this by the Ukrainians to actually do this. By the time we got to today, uh, the Ukrainians have this territory. They took over this territory. And as we go to a slower timeline, you can see that the Russians were almost in Kyiv at the very beginning of this war. Uh, they almost took Kharkiv, uh, which is the second largest city. They had all this area in the south. They had the northeast. They had all these different places. Uh, but then the Ukrainians moved forward around Kyiv. They moved uh, the Russians out toward the border this way. Uh, around Kharkiv, by the time you get to May, you see how fast they're moving in, in this direction. So this is a really tremendous achievement by the Ukrainians to do this. Of course, had a lot of Western help. So in the summertime, you looked at a lot of static uh, movement, in, almost no movement along these areas here, very, very much a, a World War I-like atmosphere. Uh, but then as July mor morphed into August and then September, uh, you can see that this is going to change quite a bit. A few Russian advances here, and then all of a sudden, by the time you get to uh, the middle to the latter part of August, you see them moving around Kharkiv and protecting that second city. And then all of a sudden, by the middle of September, September, uh, the Ukrainians have this territory right here. So that is huge. And then by the time you get to October, you start seeing movement in the south. This is what you'll see next is when they took the Kherson region, uh, that, that part of the Kherson region uh, that is to the west of the Dnipro River. And that is exactly how they, uh, the Ukrainians were able to do this. And we're hearing that Germany is offering some support to Poland what is happening and how significant is this? So what they're talking about there, Paul, is the Patriot missile system. Uh, this is an anti-aircraft and an anti-missile uh, missile defense system. And what it is designed to do is it's designed to knock out missiles and aircraft out of the sky. And it can also knock out drones, depending on which system you use. Uh, of course, this is built by the United States. Uh, the same type of technology is used by the Israelis in their Iron Dome system. Now, what the Germans were going to actually do was they were going to bring this system into to Poland so that the Poles could be protected in their particular area. But what the Poles want to do is they want to move this system into Ukraine so that you can actually protect this entire expanse of Ukraine. So what you would need to do is you would need to set up Patriot systems in places like this in order to protect uh, the main cities as well as major installations. And that's how they would uh, want to protect these areas. But they need NATO support and NATO approval to do that. And we know Vladimir Putin, very good at propaganda. What's his latest move to try to convince people that things are going well? Well, one of the things that he did on happens to be on Russian Mother's Day is he met with these mothers of Russian servicemen who are stationed in Ukraine, uh, some of which uh, were apparently widows uh, from previous engagements. Uh, and what he's been trying to do here is he's trying to he's realized that there's the possibility of discontent uh, among the Russian population because of what has happened to the troops, their failure to provide logistically for the troops. And he's brought these ladies in uh, to try to convince the general public that he is a caring 
person that he's caring for these soldiers. But of course, the facts on the ground are completely different, and those soldiers have not been taken care of by any stretch of the imagination. Absolutely. No photo op can contradict that. Well, Colonel, thank you so much for helping us break it down. We appreciate it. You bet, Paula.